Zin, Snus, Velo, whatever it is you call it, we're talking about synthetic nicotine. And there are two kinds of people who use this stuff. Number one is the people who are just looking for a buzz on a night out. And number two is people who use this for athletic performance. That's right, if you are person number one, you may never have even considered that Velo or Zin or synthetic nicotine of any kind could be beneficial for sports performance. But the reality is that these athletes have been using it for decades. And in fact, some studies estimate that up to one in two people in sports like American football are using it. But what about the average gym goer? Could the effects that these sports people see have some benefit to us when we're going into the gym and lifting weights to get bigger? Well, luckily for us, there was a study that looked to answer this very question, and we have it here. But before we do, my name is George. I'm a published researcher currently doing a PhD in muscle health. And on this channel, I bring you the latest scientific evidence around muscle building so that you don't have to wait months or even years for it to come out in the mainstream media. So without further ado, let's get into this study today, which was done in New Zealand, where they took nine healthy male students who had never seriously smoked before and who were athletes who pretty regularly compete in their respective sports. So what did the researchers do? Well, they asked them to come in to the sports testing facility uh, on three separate occasions. Now, each time that participants came into the center, they were either given two milligrams of nicotine gum, four milligrams of nicotine gum, or a placebo gum to chew on for 30 minutes. Now, it's important for me to mention at this point that products like Velo and Zin, they are simply just synthetic nicotine. And these various forms of nicotine, yes, there are different methods of which they get into your bloodstream, but they all ultimately act on the same systems in your body. But to give us some reference here, the doses that they were using in this study were around a kind of one to two strength if you were to get one of the, the packets of, of Zin. So I guess these are fairly low doses. Now, once these guys had finished chewing their gum, they spit them out and they were asked to do some tests. And there were three main tests that they were looking at. Number one was a maximum leg strength test. Now for this, they used something that looks like a fancy leg extension machine that you would find in the gym, but it's, it's used for research and, and testing purposes. They also looked at their maximum vertical jump height. So literally how high could they jump? And then finally they did a test called the Wingate test. Now, if you've never done a Wingate test before, it is essentially 30 seconds on an exercise bike where you are sprinting as fast as you can against a fixed resistance. Now it doesn't sound awful, right? 30 seconds, how bad can it be? But I've done it myself and, and I was physically sick and I've seen others be physically sick or even faint after being on this thing. But essentially this test is looking at how quickly your muscles fatigue. So you get a nice graph and you can see the drop off of force that your muscles are able to put out. Now, once all of these tests were done, participants then were asked to go home and come back a few days later and do the same tests. But this time they had a different gum and they didn't know which one they were having each time. Again, it was either the two milligram nicotine, the four milligram nicotine or the placebo gum, which tasted and looked the exact same. But enough of that, let's move on to what they found. Well, one thing that was pretty clear was that nicotine, whether it be two milligrams or four milligrams, jacked up their heart rate pretty high. So both before and after the testing, the groups that had the nicotine in their mouth, they had higher heart rates. Now, when it came to leg strength, interestingly, the group that chewed two milligrams of nicotine 30 minutes before their session, well, they were able to exert 6% more force in that test than compared to when they had the placebo gum. Weirdly though, they didn't see the same in the higher dose group, the four milligrams. But what about muscle power when they looked at how high these people could jump? Well, nicotine didn't actually seem to have any effect on this at any dose. And then we move on to the Wingate test, that muscle fatiguing test that we were talking about earlier, this also had no effect. There was no effect of nicotine on the performance in this test. So confusing results, but what do we take from this? Well, they did show that after having two milligrams of nicotine, the ability of these people to exert more force increased ever so slightly. And I think it's probably safe to say that the effects that we know nicotine has on our brain and neurotransmission probably has an influence on some of the pathways that help us produce high amounts of muscle force. And it might be the case that nicotine is essentially priming our brain to send those signals to our muscles. However, there are a few issues with this. So before you start taking nicotine before all of your weight training sessions, let's consider a few things. Number one, we do not know how long this effect lasts or if after just taking it a few times, this effect completely diminishes. We also don't know how different people respond. People who vape or smoke regularly might have no response to this or might have a greater response. Again, we don't know. Also, in regards to the actual study and the science itself, this was a study of nine people, which is a major issue when you're looking at something like this because there could have been substantial differences between individuals and there's no way of knowing that if you did this in 60, 70, 80 people, you would see a similar effect. So overall, can Zin help improve our gym performance? Well, this study suggests that there might be a very small effect on our muscle force output, but it looks like this isn't enough of an effect to outweigh some of the negative effects of taking nicotine on a regular basis, such as addiction and the mental side effects that might come along with dependence on this substance. I certainly won't be using nicotine to help improve my performance in the gym anytime soon. So thanks very much for watching everyone. And as always, I will see you soon 
soon in another video.